Well, first of all, my name is Jeff Weiss. I'm with the Office of Pipeline Safety and PHMSA. I wanted to thank everyone for coming out and helping us wrestle with our problem. I'm wondering how long it is before it's a lot of other people's issue as well and why start with pipeline. <clears throat> but be that as it may, a um, lot of really good discussion today. Um, I, I, hopefully I speak for Carl Weimer as well as myself when I say we go places repeatedly together on the stump and people want to hear the debate that you're hearing today. So I'm sort of wondering how we crystallize some of this so that it can be uh, shared with people. I know they can come back and watch a webcast, but practically speaking, you know, not many people are going to do that. So uh, a lot of good ideas, and I never doubt Vanessa and Jeannie's ability to deliver today. <laughs> but I'm wondering if we could identify the range of options and pros and cons, or maybe some narrative, put it in the docket, invite more comment in, and it sort of stabilizes the discussion about what are the ways things can be solved. And it invites in comments like 508, you know, how do we deal with that? So just a thought for you. We do have a, uh, a comment uh, from one of our viewers in the webcast. Uh, Mr. John Conley writes in and he says, uh, the regulations tell the regulated community to see uh, the Compressed Gas Association pamphlet C6 to learn what the Department of Transportation means by evaluation procedures for determining dents, cuts, digs, and gouges. This publication costs $142. If DOT is going to continue using IBR in the future, please establish a method for controlling increases in costs. What is to stop the government mandated monopoly provider from raising the cost of this publication to $1,420 in the future. If there is no alternative to the mandated material need for regulatory compliance, what is the incentive to not gouge the public? Thank you, Mr. Conley. Okay, Jeannie's testing my bifocal contacts. Um, <laughs> This is a, a webcast comment from Dan Bart, um, and it says, has DOT considered buying up the copyrights, I guess, of the SDOs under the statute? <laughs> um, I, I think we sort of addressed this a little while ago that I, I, I'm not sure how we would quantify that budget. Um, and, you know, certainly that's a little bit out of, outside the control of FEMSA or DOT. I think if we made the request for several million dollars to buy standards or receive some number representing what the SDOs felt that they would lose in revenue and pro propose that um, to Congress, it would probably be more than the government was able or willing to pay. So no, we have not um, had a lot of internal discussions about buying the copyrights from the SDOs. Question. Do you, and I apologize if I missed this, but are you anticipating drafting a regulation, implementing the statute, or you haven't decided that yet? Or how, how do you think you're going to proceed? I don't think a statute is necessary. I think it's self-executing. Yeah, it's self-executing. We well, cannot but, but incorporate the, by reference after January 1st of 2013. We'll have to do something else mm -hmm. if we need to update the standard or develop a new standard. But at, in this room, we're discussing what the regulation means, how it would be implemented, what kind of a website. and. I suppose there are some decisions for you to make, so I'm wondering if, I guess you, you don't think so, but it would seem like a regular, often a statute is, you know, they, they don't know what they meant or we don't know what they meant. You have a proceeding to sort of flesh it out and, and you issue a regulation. I think as part of an individual rulemaking, we would probably have to answer the questions you're talking about. We might have to put guidance out. Be, be perfectly honest, at the present time, that's not the issue. The issue is whether we can even update the standards that need updating. But we, what we're thinking of doing is at least putting out some kind of an, and again, when I say thinking, I'm talking about at this level. Um, we're, we're thinking about proposing that the department, because we, we see this as more than just a, a, a FIMSA issue or a pipeline issue. We think that the process can be improved. We were looking at this before ACUS did a recommendation, before the statute was passed. And we're learning a lot of good ideas about things, the way we can improve the process and the way we can increase access, but not necessarily make it for, available for free on the web. And we're looking at what kind of things we will put in there. And we've, we've already talked about some of the things we just learned today. 
that would be any, in any document like that. It would, be in, it would be a policy statement, but we'd probably publish it on the web. And, and in one other minor point to buttress what um, Neil said, I think if we put it, if we come up with a solution a month from now, six months from now, and put it in a regulation, that erodes the flexibility that we've talked about because as the SDOs continue to evolve or change their business models, we're then in a rulemaking in order to change an implementation strategy to reflect what they may be doing. And I, I'm not sure if we want to be on that cycle either, just from a time perspective. And but I think yeah, what's not really a suggestion as much as a question. Yeah. Right? But I think the bottom line is we would have to opine on things like is read only okay? Uh, is it okay if you have to register to be able to get at it? But those are, I think, relatively minor compared to the problem of not being able to use standards that we have been using for years, if not decades. A couple of questions, just trying to figure out the parameters of what the solution might look like. Because um, I haven't heard definitively today, and I don't know, maybe you haven't come up with a legal opinion. Does the read-only clunky model, does that meet the needs of Section 24? I, I, our opinion at the present time, I believe we all agree on this. Yes. We've talked about this. Read-only would be free on the Internet. And has there been any analysis of the 60-plus standards that PHMSA uses? How many of those are already read-only, or how many... Because I've heard a few of the SDOs today say, well, we probably could live with that. So do we know how many couldn't live with that and maybe what the revenue from those standards are that's coming into them yearly from the ones that they can't live with? We, yeah. we, we know that some of the key players would not make it available even in read-only. We don't know for every single standard right. which ones are available, which ones are not. And, and a lot of this is changing. Um, when this, since this issue first started with the legislation, at least one organization that, that TIMSA is involved with has decided to put the documents on the web for free. Okay, thanks.